What I've got for you today is another product and we are back in the world of diesel heaters once again. So, in this box, which I'm just going to open just now for you, is another diesel heater from another manufacturer. The question I get asked quite a lot and it comes up quite a lot in the comments is, which diesel heater do I buy? Do you recommend a diesel heater? Where did you buy your diesel heater from? Or where can I get one? So this company, Lavener, they contacted me and asked if I would show off their pro, the, the pro version of the diesel heater. So they make two kinds, a normal generic, you know, average run of the mill diesel heater and the pro version. And the pro version is supposed to be a lot better than your normal, average, cheap ass uh, diesel here. It's supposed to be made with better parts, uh, like the glow plug and the motor. Everything's supposed to be balanced and tested better. Uh, the connections for are for the connections onto the ECU and ECU itself are supposed to be waterproof, and all these sorts of things. Better case, better, better, just better everything in general. So we have in this box the 2 kilowatt version of their Pro Heater and we are going to, today we're going to just take out the box and take it apart. I'm not going to run it today because we know what a diesel heater running looks like so I don't need to show you it running. But in another video we will run it and test and do running tests but not today. Today we're just going to open it up and have a look at it and see what makes it Pro as opposed to the normal heater. Uh, right, I need to move the camera and stuff now, so let's go around. I'm not sure that's an entirely better shot, but it is uh, slightly more out of my way so I can stand. So I was just reading the email on my laptop over there. So the difference between the standard and the Pro heater, yes, thank you Windows Update, please don't update the laptop in the background, is the... The housing covers waterproof, the glow plug is a Kyocera glow plug, the burn chamber is supposed to be a quality burn chamber, it's supposed to be a standard burn chamber. The temperature sensor is supposed to be a better brand name, Latron, Latron, Latron sensor, run a standard. And the fan motor is supposed to be balanced twice over the standard heaters. So, uh, if I was a guessing man, I would guess that in this box is going to be fuel pump, exhaust, air ducts, exhaust, air exhaust, the standard stuff that's standard across all of the heaters. Yes, there we go, right. Wire and loom. Shoot, wow. That's nice fuel line. I mean, I'm a sucker for things being written on things, but that's a nice thick gauge nylon fuel line. That's not the cheap nasty, oh, oh, I don't even have any cheap nasty stuff to show you, but you know what the cheap stuff looks like. It's like, Half that thing is wow. Okay, we're already off to flying start. That's and this is good from minus forty to two hundred degrees. Fuel they've actually included fuel line that can sit sort of near an exhaust. Wow. Okay, I'm already impressed. Now we have that that's that this is a nice exhaust. Wait, this has actually got a cover on the outlet and can you see it's wow nice hold on I have cheap exhaust on the floor next to me that's your usual ribbed uh, bendy cheap exhaust this is like this is like re legit I almost say this is almost like a proper Babasto type or Eberspacker stuff which brings me to my next point on what I was going to talk about Lavener, the company, from what I understand it, the people who run Lavener are the people who were going to be running or did run Webasto's Chinese factories. So like these aren't just copies of the Webasto heaters as such, they are literally the moulds and parts that Webasto would have used in their Chinese heaters. Bearing in mind I'm talking years like years ago, not just now. I know now Wabasto have opened up Chinese factories, etc., to make things, but 
in the past, when when they were thinking about doing it, these were the guys that were going to be there. That's why I see the exhaust. It's, uh, that's actually got a flow from the inside. It's not just, uh, I did, is it, is it that one? I have popped my microphone off. Uh, is it this one? No, there's, there's one of these cheap exhausts that I had. It's not got this shape in it. It's literally a thing and then it's got a spring of metal inside it and a bit of uh, fiberglass in there and it's, just, it's pretty much a straight through pipe. This is just another one of the comes down, goes in, swirls, comes back out, exhausts. But, right, so that's the standard parts, you know, ducting, pipe box, etc, etc. Obviously, it's the small ducting because we're on the two kilowatt. Is that 65 mil? 65, anyway. This is the box of basic parts, although nice parts. What was it saying? Ah, oh, uh, yeah, lavender. So they are essentially what Wabasto would have been in China making the heaters, so hopefully they'll be better quality, seeing as they're supposed to be the proper thing. Oh, an instruction manual. How nice. Yep. Oh, wow, this is actually a nice instruction manual. I will read it later and see how um, how well it's written. You know, if it's uh, in Chinglish or not. But it's actually nicely, nicely run. Huh. Ah, so I know I keep saying Wobasto and this might look like I mean all the heaters, the Eberspackers and the Wobastos, they all they all begin to look the same. So I don't know if they had some sort of deal on where they would make the same heaters and charge the same money for them and share designs. I don't know. If anyone wants to leave a comment about that down below, that would be fantastic. You know what, I'm gonna take this little box out and get rid of the big one. Uh, big at the, enjoy the floor. So for once we've actually got a well wrapped here. It's not just stuck in polystyrene. Cause I did get one when I was doing the camper, it arrived and it was smashed to fuck. Um, it was uh, jammed in the box and all the ends were broken on it. So it wasn't very well wrapped. This has actually got padding in the right places and is wrapped really nicely. So there is the heater. I'll just make sure there's nothing else in the... Oh, there's electronics in the box. Electronics, uh, there, uh, there. Oh, I'm gonna, I need to find the fuel pump, which must be in this other box. I was having trouble finding the fuel pump because it was uh, inside one of the ducting lines. So I was like, come on, have I managed to not see my fuel pump? No, and I was like, oh, this ducting is really heavy. So it is just a standard 22 mil fuel pump. That's fine, that's all we need to see. Back in the box for you. Right, polystyrene away. And here we have the controller. Controller. And there's instructions for the controller. It appears to be operating instructions for LCD display. Oh, uh, it's, um, I want to say it's not, it's not the typical uh, normal LCD display, the cheap looking uh, other ones. It's not, it's, um, no, it's still plugged in here just now. So, LCD display, the triangular three pin, three pin plug. And I know what you're thinking. Will the afterburner work with this? Well, we'll find out. Not today, but we will find out. Right, controller, remote control, instruction manual. Now, what do we notice from these uh, two ports? <gasps> One of them is dirty. This heater has been run and tested before it left the factory. That's kind of a big deal. That means someone has actually tested this to make sure it works. That's, that's new and exciting. I've never opened up one of these diesel heaters before and had it actually black from being tested. Right, now I'm going to bring the camera over here so you can get uh, in better inside shots. As previously stated, I'm not gonna run it today. We are just gonna take it apart. 
So this is the Pro version. I believe one of the differences of the Pro version is it gets these clips to hold the top of the heater body on. Just unscrew that first. Right, cap, two clips. Wow, this is fucking stiff, Jesus. The question is, is this a nicer plastic? It feels more, you know, AV likes to cut things with knives to see if you can hear the glass inside them. Well, let's see if we can uh, hear any glass inside this. Oh, oh yes, there's a glass reinforced, uh, it's not like the polystyrene nylon. Does it, have, it doesn't have any two marks. Hold on, let me, um, let me do the EV thing of hold it next to the microphone so you can hear the, hear the glass in the, Oh, that's it, smash the microphone. Oh, crunchy glass. So that's nicely reinforced. Wow, a box of electronics. An actual box. <gasps> that's nice. Wait, it's got an extra sensor. Oh, wait. Holy shit, boys. Someone might have actually built a half decent heater. Oh, we need to take out its thing. Let's uh, remove it from its uh, entire, entire entire thing. Let me just take the rubber thing off the bottom. That will certainly help. Come off rubber grommet. Rubber grommet. -er there we go. Rubber grommet off the bottom. That'll make things a bit easier. Right, let's take it out. Come on. Oh, she's, she's a tight fit. Woo! Woo! I'm gonna have to take the. Am I, am I actually gonna have to take the end cap off? Usually with the other cheap heaters, this just falls out. I'm gonna actually have to get a screwdriver in, take the end cap off, so there's enough play. It's getting real. Let me just uh, pop this off. Oh, that felt nice. That was a nice tight pop. Okay, end cap is off. Also made of the same glass uh, reinforced. Plastic as the other part of the housing, as it? Let me just do a... Oh, yes! Fantastic! Heat and abrasion resistance. Now, we should be able to wiggle this out. Here we go. All right, the heat-proof pads are falling out, that's okay. That's... I'm used to that happening. So a lot of the heaters have these, I don't know if anyone's ever noticed, there's heat proof pads that the body sits down onto, so it kind of protects the case from this, isn't uh, exclusive to this particular heater, but I have seen some heaters that didn't have any at all, so we do the case check again, just make sure this is the same plastic. Oh yes it is, lovely, lovely plastic. Now let me pick up the green thing that I dropped on the floor, or the two green things. I mean, uh, granted, it looks very, they all look very similar, but it's what's in here, in this box of, an actual nice box, like, it's not exposed. Ha! Okay, from my well, little things I know that look, like these are, these are like real <laughs> Webasto style plugs. Right, I'm, I'm even in the shot. These are proper waterproof connectors and plugs. Oh, we might have a winner here, boys. We might actually have a winner. Uh, these plastic clips on the fan. Uh, I'm guessing these are balancing clips. So your first stage, you would have your motor on its assembly. As we did with the bearing replacement, you put it on, you spin it up, you see where it needs to get cut out for balance, that would be your first balance, and then they must obviously put it on again with a fan on it and balance the fan. That's nice. Next question. Is the fan made of the same plastic as the housings? Let's give it a little test. It is indeed. Glass reinforced. <laughs> this just gets better and better every time we touch it. Right. So, what will we do first? Will we take the ECU box off? I think we'll take the ECU box off. Right, let me get hex uh, bits and we'll start digging in. I'll be honest with you. 
When they sent the emails that gave all the blurb about, oh, waterproof connectors and so on, I have seen another uh, style of heater that had waterproof connectors and, and they weren't. It was the box and all the ECU was still absolutely open to the elements. There was nothing waterproof about it. So, let us get inside. So, one of them on the top. It still lets you squeeze the things in to remove the ECU box. And we'll flip up out of the way. On one side, we have the Thanks, um, that laptop, that's, that's quite annoying now. Fan motor connector. Oh, these are proper, actual, like, Wabasto style connectors. I am, I am aroused. We've got the go plug, and we have the overheat temperature sensor, the one on the body. So I'm curious as to what this temperature sensor is for. Because we've got one well, I presume this still has one in the housing of the LCD controller because obviously you want this to be in your van to measure the heat in here. But it's also got one on the body. That's interesting. Okay, so let us have a look inside. All right, okay, so there's still a hole in the bottom of this one. So waterproof may be a bit of a stretch, maybe water resistant or water, less water ingress. Depends if it's conformally coated or not. Granted, when it's sitting that way up, that'll be better, right? Let's have a, can we get in without breaking anything? We can but try. Oh, here we go, one side. Two sides, and now this is in two. ECU. So I'm going to hold this in front of the camera so that you electronics wizard kiddos can get a good look at it. Now that, that do? Right. Are there any screws holding this in? Oh, I've just spotted the, the rotational the fan RPM sensor. I don't know if it's a Hall effect or the other kind, but can we get this out? I can see two plastic tabs are sort of holding it in. Can we get to do it? Right, is this? There's a plastic flap here. Plastic flap. All right, it just covers the cables up. So, I don't know if we can get this out of its little dealy. It's pretty fucking well staked in there. I don't really want to break it before we've ever ran it, but I can see capacitor, a large coil. Get it in the shop, moron! Large coil, capacitor, you people know what these electronic components are better than I do. I don't want to start prizing it apart, seems we haven't run it yet. But, okay, so we've got a little ECU box. Just click that back together. Right, ECU box, I keep saying that and just not. Oops, if you put it back together right way around. Right, so we have at least a nice box that will keep your electronics more protected than the other exposed kind. Granted, it still has a hole in the bottom. You, know, you could have... Could you put a rubber... Could they have put a rubber grommet on that? Could they? Perhaps? I don't know. Perhaps they could have. Right. Next up, uh, it's supposed to have a, I don't know if we'll get a C on it, that's fancy brand name sensor, but we can have a look. Oh, we can have a look if we can get this out of here. Bit of pliers, perhaps. Because I just need to squidge it down a bit and over a bit. Honest. Really? No. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought. Okay. Overheaty temperature sensor. I don't know if it's a brand name, I can't tell. There's nothing to show you on it. Okay, here is something another commenter pointed out. 
can you see in here, if I do it carefully, that this, this part here, the very end part, is the actual sensor head. This, the rest of the white ceramic is just a housing for it. And the two are not attached. Can, can you see? Can you see that it moves? And there's like a grommet or an o-ring in between the two, if that would focus. And what happened in his here was this, the grommet, uh, it disappeared, it hit up, so you can actually pull that out of there. Can you see that? That moves. That's not attached. That part is separate to the other. So his, uh, that bit fell off or broke or overheated or something, allows that to move out of the way, like of the heater body, so it's no longer reading the correct temperature. So his heat, I can't remember if it, it didn't think it was lit because that was no longer contacting and making a good temperature reading. But so that's that's the thing to watch out for if you're ever uh, diagnosing. Make sure that this sensor's still assembled and the inside parts are still together. You could of course just uh, I think put a blob of high temperature silicon on the back of that and stick it in place so that it never moves ever again. Well, that's our uh, overheat sensor. We've got we've got numbers on the motor. It just says DC motor and some numbers. Twelve volts. This one is. Oh well, this is supposed to have the a fancy glow plug. So let us go inside and look at the glow plug. Hello. Oh. Well, it, from here it already looks different to the normal. Glow plug. Uh, will I be able to get out a pair of needle nose pliers? Hopefully it's not in there stupendously tight and it'll just spin off. Oh, it did. You beautiful, beautiful people. Let's unthread this. Here we go. One glow plug. It doesn't have any brand names stamped on it. So we'll just have to assume that it's the uh, brand name Kyocera, Kyocera glow plug. Oh, it does have an end on it, so. Hey, well. And, right, let's get inside and see what their pro burn chamber looks like. Lost my monkey, there it is. Another thing people have mentioned is on replacing this gasket every time you open it. I don't really see why you would do that. Granted, if you were to take this off and your gasket was to snap in half or bits of it come off that left you with a gap or you know a not, not properly sealing surface, then yes, I would absolutely recommend replacing the gasket. But if it comes apart uh, with no issues and your gasket's still intact, I would just put it back together again with the same gasket. Because you've not changed anything. It's not like you've taken the fan assembly off and put a completely different fan assembly on, in which case the gasket now won't match up to the parts that it's squashed. Uh, you know, it's not per two perfectly level surfaces. The gasket's there to take up any inaccuracies in machining, but you're putting the same one back on in the exact same place. In theory, your gasket will just sit right back into where it started from. Right, and that should give us the burn, burner, burner motor. It's all like that. This came off with the gasket absolutely still intact, not a problem whatsoever. So you would just put that straight back on when it comes to it. Okay, that lets us into the burn chamber. Now, ooh, this burn chamber's actually got a nice gasket. The other gaskets I've had for the burn chambers, oh, mother of God, is just like these green ones here. This one appears to have the metalised style gasket. I wish I brought a spanner. It's not long enough to do that. Let me get a spanner to assist me in my journey here. Let me just... Uh, these are quite tight. Not stupendously tight, but just tight enough. Is this one well here as well? Is it, imagine it's tight as well. Oh, here we go. Right. Thank you, Spanner. Let's take this out. 
I have to say it's strange uh, taking apart a two kilowatt again. It's been it's been a long time since I've had a little teeny tiny here to take apart. For those who have asked the question, there are two sizes of heater. There is a two kilowatt and a five kilowatt. The heater body sizes are completely different. The burner sizes are different. There is no eight kilowatt. There is no ten kilowatt. There is no twelve kilowatt. These are just numbers printed on the outside of the box. You want more heat, you put, put more fuel in. That's how you're getting weird numbers. Okay, burn chamber. That's rubber bits, nice and stuck. Come on. Why is it always this? Every time, the rubber bit. Ah, there we go. Okay. Well, she's been run. She's a, a sooty. So this diesel heater has run, which is nice. It's been tested. I'm not gonna lie. I don't see anything different between the, this burn chamber, which is a pro burn chamber, and the normal one. Unless it's thicker. I don't know, that, that base plate feels awfully thick. But surely that can't be their only difference in... in uh, because it looks exactly the same to me. Inside. You want to see inside? You want to see in the black hole? Woo! It's just black. There's not a lot to see. It's just your aluminium housing. Oh, well, should, can you see the, there is a gasket in there? The metali metalized, it's like a metalized foil gasket with the gasket material on the other side of it. Feels weird. Uh, exhaust hole. Exhaust hole. Is it nicely? Feels all right. It's not got any horrendous burrs or bits not machined off properly. Um, right, so, twice balanced fan more, supposedly. Looks nice, looks like a just, I suppose they all look exactly the same. It's just whether or not they are machined and balanced properly. But we'll find that out when we run it and see if it tries to vibrate its way off the workbench or if it just sits there quite happily. What else have we got? Uh, the housings. We have seen the housings are made of nice, robust, glass-reinforced uh, plastic. Probably nylon, so it doesn't melt. Or ABS. One of the two of them doesn't melt as easily as the other. The Pro, Pro Burn Chamber. Mm, uh, I'd have to have their version of a normal burn chamber to compare it to, but from first looks, it doesn't look really any different than a normal burn chamber. The glow plug does look like a slightly better glow plug. It's got actually got a ceramic inside and that's well, got the correct end for this heat rust, which is a start. And it's a proper waterproof Robusto style of uh, plug. I don't have a... I did have a Robusto glow plug here sitting somewhere. Ah, it's probably back in the Webasto box now. Housing looks nice. It's not sharp anywhere, which is always always a good start. Except for it's supposed to be sharp like on the, on the edges of machined surfaces. That's fine. And we've seen the ECU is in a very attractive little box containing its innards and hopefully protecting it from the elements, etc, etc and the controller and whatnot. So, now that we have seen all its innards of it and its proneness, uh, what we'll do in the next video is obviously we'll put it all back together and put it on the bench, give it fuel, mm, fire it up, see what it does on its first run, uh, what kind of noises it makes, and, and, and apart from that, we'll have a look at its settings, check its carbon monoxide, etc. So if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, as always, please put them down below and I'll try and answer them. Uh, you can send me an email via the email link, via the website, all these things. You can contact me. Uh, as I say, I am quite happy to read emails and comments and try to help you as best I can in the small capacity of helping that I can. So, as always, thanks for watching.